Hello everyone, I hope you've had a wonderful day so far. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how equations can be functions. So in order to begin, go ahead and get your notes out from class, uh, have them printed out, or take this on a separate piece of paper. And remember, whenever you're finished with the notes, please upload a picture to Google Classroom. So in order to begin, uh, what we're going to be doing today, uh, we're going to be talking about how functions can be represented. So if we go to your notes, we have that functions can also be, be represented by an equation. And this is the most general thing that you see. Uh, usually functions can be shown as equations or sometimes it can be a rule. Uh, we have that the equation will generate ordered pairs And that's by taking an input, usually it's the x value, that results in a certain output. And if you remember in a prior video, uh, we have that only one input goes to one output, and that one input does not go into multiple outputs. So for example, if we plug in two, we should be able to get just one value back. And then we have the graph of an equation is the set of all ordered pairs, which often forms a line or a curve. And by curve, I mean any other graph that isn't a very straight line. Okay? Let's move on. So, we can think about functions as a machine that takes in something and spits something out. So uh, we have an x value which is usually the input and a y value which is usually the output. So the x value is called the independent variable because it doesn't really matter what you choose but it's the fact that you're choosing it. Now the y value is called the dependent variable because it de it's determined by whatever x value you choose. So if we want uh, to think of it as a machine, if we type in a certain code, we're going to get a certain output. So that code is the independent variable and the output is the dependent. It depends on the code in order to run. So let's go over some uh, how, how we can graph functions using the table. So usually we're given a function. Uh, let's say like for number one we have y equals x plus four. And in this case it gives us a table. So in order to find what the function will actually look like, uh, in other words we're going to be graphing the function, we have to complete the table. So on the left side we have the x values and we have to determine what the y values are. So the way we need to do this is we take the first x value, which in this case is negative 5, and we're going to plug it into our equation. So y equals x plus 4. So we're going to change the x into a negative 5 and we're going to add 4. Negative 5 plus 4 gives us negative 1. So that means that y is equal to negative 1, and we've completed our first row for the table. So in order to continue this, we're just going to go down the table. So the next thing we're going to do is change x into negative 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0, so that means that y is equal to 0. So for x equals negative 4, we're going to move over to y, and we're going to put a 0. Next, we have x is equal to negative 2. We're going to take our equation, y equals x plus 4. We're going to look at x, it's going to be negative 2. So we have negative 2 plus 4, which gives us positive 2. So that means that y is equal to positive 2. And now we have x is equal to 0. So remember, we have 
y equals x plus 4. In this case, x will be equal to 0. 0 plus 4 is 4. And that's equal to y. So we have y is equal to 4. And that goes here. Now, whenever we're dealing with a table, if you read straight across for each row, that creates an ordered pair. So our first ordered pair is going to be negative 5 comma negative 1. So let's go ahead and plot that. Remember, in a prior video, we went over that. So for a negative 5 comma negative 1, I start from the origin. The negative 5 tells me to go left 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And negative 1 tells me to go down 1. So our first point is here. So we have negative 5 comma negative 1. That's our first point. Next we have negative 4 comma 0. We start from the origin. We go left 4. And 0 tells us we don't move up or down any. So our point's here. So remember this is negative 4 comma 0. Then we have negative 2 comma 2. Negative 2 tells me to go left 2, and the positive 2 tells me to go up 2. This is negative 2, comma 2. And then finally we have the point 0, comma 4. 0 tells me not to go left or right any. 4 tells me to go up 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4. We have a point here, and that point is 0, comma 4. And then in order to finish this, we're going to connect the points with a straight line. So if we do that, we have something that looks like this. And that would be our graph for the table. All right. So I want you to take a moment and try number two by yourself. OK, so now that you're back, um, what I want you to do is check your answer with number two now. You should have something that looks like this, except I expect you to show some of your work. All right. So if you didn't get this, uh, compare the two problems, see what you did wrong. Okay. Let's move on to number three. For this one, we have y is equal to three x. And we have the x values of negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. So starting off from the top, we have to fill out, fill out this table. So if x is equal to negative 2, what would y be? So we say y is equal to 3 times negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So that means y is equal to negative 6. Now, what happens if x is negative 1? So we have y is equal to 3 times negative 1. Well, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So that means y would be negative 3. Next, we have what happens if x is 0. So we have y is equal to 3 times 0. Well, 3 times 0 is just 0. So we have y is equal to 0. And finally, what happens if x is 1? Well, we have y is equal to 3 times 1, and 3 times 1 is 3. So that means that y is equal to 3. Now from here, our table is complete. So what we need to do is plot the ordered pairs. So we have negative 2 and negative 6. That tells me to go left 2, down 6. That's our first point. We have negative 1, comma, negative 3. That tells me left 1, down 3. We have 0, 0, which tells me to go 0 units left or right, and 0 units up or down. And finally, we have 1, comma, 3, which tells me to go right 1 and up 3. After that, we connect our points. And that is the graph for number three. I want you to stop the video and try number four by yourself.
Okay, welcome back. You should have number four completed now. So if you take a look at my number four, hopefully yours looks very similar. If it doesn't, check for mistakes and see what you did wrong. If you're having issues with it, please let me know and I will be happy to help. Let's move on to the second page. So with the second page, um, I want you to try number five by yourself. And then uh, we will do number six. So before then, let's go ahead, take a moment, you try number five, and check back with me. Okay, thank you for pausing the video and actually trying this. So number five should look something like this. Uh, if Again, if you didn't get what I have, please go back and check your work. Make sure that you didn't make like a silly addition or multiplication, some sort of mistake like that. And again, if you're still having problems with it, please let me know. All right, number six. We have y is equal to one minus one over three multiplied by x. And we have the x is equal to negative three, zero, three, and six. So we have to fill in the chart for y. In order to do this, we're going to start off with the top. So we're going to say what happens when x is equal to negative 3. So in order to do that, I'm going to need a little bit more room. So I'm going to start up here. We have y is equal to 1 minus 1 over 3 multiplied by negative 3. So this is 1 over x is equal to negative 3. Okay, we have to simplify this. So following order of operations, we have to do the multiplication first. So if we have uh, 1 over 3 multiplied by negative 3, well, negative 3 can be rewritten as negative 3 over 1. Then this means we're multiplying two uh, fractions. So whenever we do that, we multiply straight across. So we have 1 minus 1 times negative 3 is negative 3 over 3 times 1 is 3. Next, we do the division. So we have 1 minus negative 3 over 3 is going to be negative 1. 1 minus negative 1 is the same thing as 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. So that means our answer for this one is going to be 2. Okay. Next, we're going to plug in x is equal to 0. So I have... <clears throat> I'm going to move over here for this problem. So if x is equal to 0, we're going to have y is equal to 1 minus 1 over 3 times 0. Following order of operations, the first thing we do is multiplication for this one. So we have 1 minus 1 over 3 multiplied by 0 is going to be 0. And 1 minus 0 is just 1. So that means that whenever x is 0, y is going to be 1. Next one, we have x is equal to 3. So we have y is equal to 1 minus 1 over 3 multiplied by 3. Okay. First thing we do for this problem, we have to do the multiplication. So in order to do that, we're going to change this 3 into 3 over 1. We have 1 minus. Since we're multiplying fractions, we go 1 times 3 is 3, and 3 times 1 is 3. Now we have 1 minus 3 over 3, which can be re rewritten to 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So that means that whenever x is 3, y is 0. And finally, we have what happens whenever x is equal to 6. So we have y is equal to 1 minus 1 over 3 multiplied by 6. In order to do this, we're going to start with this multiplication. So we're going to change the 6 into 6 over 1. We have 1 minus 1 times 6, which is 6, over 3 times 1, which is 3. We're going to simplify this. So we have 1 minus 6 over 3 is 2. 
and 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So that means that whenever y or x is equal to 6, we have y is equal to negative 1. Next, we have to graph these ordered pairs. So we're going to start off with negative 3 and 2. Negative 3 tells me to go left 3, up 2. 0, comma 1 tells me to not move left or right any, and to move up 1. Next, we have 3, comma 0. That tells me to move right 3 and up or down 0. And then we have 6, comma negative 1. So that tells me to go to the right 3, or I mean 6, and down 1. So we have these four points. If we connect those points, we have this line. And that would be our graph for number 6. All right, let's talk about the next part. So 7 through 14. Now with this section, uh, instead of the table, we're given the domain of the function. So uh, we have to find the range values. So if you remember, domain correlates to the x values. Range correlates to the y values. So what this is really asking us to do is to just fill in a table and tell us what the range is. So if we make this table ourselves, on the left we're going to have x, on the right we're going to have y. The domain tells us that it has 4, 6, and 8. So that means that our possible x values are going to be 4, 6, and 8. And we have to determine what the y values would be. So. Let's do the same thing we've been doing. We start from the top of the table. We say, well, what happens to y whenever x is equal to 4? So we have y is equal to 4 minus 5 because x is equal to 4. 4 minus 5 simplifies to negative 1. So we have y is equal to negative 1. Okay? Going to separate these a little bit. Next, we have x is equal to 6. So we have y is equal to x is 6 minus 5. 6 minus 5 is positive 1. So we have y is equal to 1 when x is equal to 6. Finally, we have what happens when x is equal to 8. So I have, I'm going to make some space over here. y is equal to x minus 5. So x is 8 minus 5. 8 minus 5 is positive 3, and that goes here. Now it's asking us for the range. And I said earlier that the range correlates to the y values. So what we have to do is say, well, the range is equal to the set of y values. So negative 1, comma, 1, comma, 3. And that's what this is asking for. Okay? I want you to try number 8. 10, 12, and 14 by yourself. And those I will be checking uh, whenever you turn this in. So let's go over 9, 11, and 13. So for number 9, we have y is equal to 4 minus x, and the domain is negative 2, 3, 5. First step we have a table to make. So we have x and y. The domain correlates to the x values. So we can say negative 2, 3, and 5. Now we have to find the y values for each. So when x is equal to negative 2, we have y is equal to 4 minus negative 2. 4 minus negative 2 is the same thing as 4 plus 2. And 4 plus 2 is equal to 6. Next, we have y equal to 3. So we have y is equal, I mean, x is equal to 3. So we have y is equal to 4 minus 3. And 4 minus 3 simplifies to 1. So when x is equal to 3, y is equal to 1. 
and then we have what happens when x is equal to 5. So we have y is equal to 4 minus 5. And 4 minus 5 simplifies to negative 1. Okay? So what is the range again? Well, those would be the y values of the function. So I can say that the range for number 9, so r is equal to the set 6, 1, negative 1. And that's going to be my answer. Okay, let's move on to number 11. So number 11, we have y is equal to 7 minus 1 half x. And the domain is equal to negative 4, 0, and 6. We start the problem off the same way. We're going to make a table. We have x values on the left, the y values on the right. Remember that the domain represents the x values. So we can say that uh, x can be negative 4, 0, or 6. And now we have to find those values. So when x is negative 4, what is y? So we have y is equal to 7 minus 1 half times negative 4. And now we have to solve this problem. So we change negative 4 into a fraction. We have 7 minus 1 times negative 4 is negative 4 over 2 times 1 is 2. So we have 7 minus negative 4 over 2. Negative 4 over 2 simplifies to negative 2. And then 7 minus negative 2 is the same thing as 7 plus 2. So we have y is equal to 9. I'm going to go over here for a little bit more room. So we have y is equal to 7 minus 1 half. This time we're going to plug 0 in for x. Okay. If we simplify this, we have 7 minus 1 half times 0 is 0. And 7 minus 0 is 7. And finally, we have what happens when x is equal to 6. Well, we have y is equal to 7 minus 1 half times 6. In order to do this, we're going to change 6 into a fraction. So 6 over 1. We have 7 minus 1 times 6 is 6. 2 times 1 is 2. If we simplify this, we have 7 minus 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then finally, 7 minus 3 is 4. So our y values are 9, 7, and 4, and we're looking for the range again. So that means that the range values would be 9, 7, and 4. And that is problem 11. Finally, let's do number 13. So we have y is equal to 7 minus 4x. And the domain is negative 3, negative 1, and 5. So let's make our table. We have our x values and our y values. Remember again that the domain represents the x values. So the x value can be negative 3, negative 1, or 5. So now we have to figure out what the y values would be for each of these cases. So if x is equal to negative 3, we have y is equal to 7 minus 4 times negative 3. And now we solve this. So we have 7 minus 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. And 7 minus negative 12, that's the same thing as adding 12. So 7 plus 12 is going to be 19. What happens when x is equal to negative 1? Well, we have y is equal to 7 minus 4 times negative 1. Well, we have 7 minus 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. If we subtract negative, that's the same thing as adding. So we have 7 plus 4, which is going to be 11. And finally, we have, again, I'm going to move over here. Uh, what happens when x is equal to 5? So we have y 
is equal to 7 minus 4 times 5. And we're going to solve this. So we have 7 minus 4 times 5 is 20. So we have 7 minus 20, which gives us negative 13. So what would the range be? Again, the range is the y values of the function. So we have that the range is equal to the set negative 13, comma, 11, comma, 19. And that is going to be our answer for number 13. Remember that you have problems 8, 10, 12, and 14 to complete on your own time. Be sure to have those completed whenever you turn this in. And again, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Uh, you can also join my office hours on Wednesday. Uh, just pop into the meeting, let me know you're there so I can respond to you. And again, if you have any problems and need help with this, please let me know as soon as possible. Uh, be looking for a homework assignment to go along with this. Other than that, uh, once you finish those four problems, take pictures of it, submit it to Google Classroom, and you're done. I hope you have a wonderful day, and see you next time.